All right, everyone. It is 12.31. I think we can go ahead and just get started. Uh, my name is Haman Dong. I'm the one of the uh, librarians here at the UI Library. And uh, today's uh, today's workshop is on Central Library Skills to A's Graduate School. And this session is being recorded, uh, just so you know. And uh, I will send the recording um, forward to you uh, after, um, after the video being processed. And throughout the presentation, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, that's, that applies to both folks in, in person as well as folks online. So feel free to unmute or put your questions in the chat. So. Uh, hmm. There we go. Right, so here's the agenda for today. So first I'm going to start with the, uh, the building tour. Okay, talk about some of the essential library services here, uh, assuming that you are one of the newer graduate students just enrolled. And then talk about some of the uh, uh, books and articles and where to find them, uh, how to find those. And then talk about some search strategies uh, and then some other resources um, that will be helpful for you as a, as a graduate student. So first I want to start by talking about how to get help from the library. And uh, so we have a group of uh, librarians here uh, available to assist you with your information. That could be like uh, narrowing down your topic, finding uh, research resources for your assignment or for your paper, thesis, dissertation, or getting help with citation, or just, just any other general help. Feel free to uh, contact us. Um, you can uh, contact us uh, via 24-7 chat. You can send us an email. You can call us. Uh, you can visit us uh, at the reference desk if you are in the building. You can send us a text or, or you can choose to meet uh, with your subject liaison person. So our liaison program is actually that we have uh, individual, uh, individual folks that are dedicated to like their specific college or program. And so we can feel free to reach out to your liaison person if you have like a more in-depth research uh, request. So if you are in the agriculture and life sciences uh, college, for instance, you can feel free to reach out to me. And uh, let me uh, go to the library's website. So on the library's website, on the top right, the Ask Us button uh, lists the different ways you can get help. And you go to Meet. Here you can access your individual liaison person. The easiest way is just to uh, send them your um, request for meeting or just let them know what kind, what kind of help that you need. So feel free to just send them an email or you can simply click the uh, request for meeting and then tell them more about like what specific uh, resources that you need. So that will, so this could apply for both uh, like in-person, uh, on-campus students as well as off-campus. So we might be able to meet with you either uh, on Zoom or we can you know, chat over the phone. Uh, first, let's start with the viewing tour. Uh, I'll talk about some of the essential spaces and services in the library. I'm not gonna cover every single corner here in the building, but uh, just some of the uh, essential uh, service points that you should be aware of. So first we'll start with the uh, start on the first floor. The first floor is our collaborative zone so we can uh, work with your uh, you can meet with your classmates and uh, uh, we have a lot of like open study area for you to use. And uh, the circulation desk is where you can you know check out materials and check things in. And then this is where you can also pick up books from your course reserve if you're an instructor with some books or uh, DVDs on course reserve. And uh, this is also where you check out like laptops, like chargers and things like that. And then the reference desk is where you can get help, more like in-depth research help. And uh, you can typically find us uh, Monday to Friday. This semester is from 10 o'clock in the morning to four o'clock in the afternoon and uh, we can assist with whatever you need. And then uh, our computer lab, you can use our computers and to also use them to print both in black and white and also in color. Second floor is also a collaborative zone. 
So then instead you just uh, so you can feel free to uh, you can feel free to talk. You don't need to be super quiet. And uh, the main stack is where you find most of the library books. And uh, we have main stacks on second, third, and fourth floor. And then periodicals are where the where the uh, the bound journals are. So those can be a little bit confusing, uh, but uh, this is all sec the second floor is where you can find the uh, periodicals. And then we also have a dual monitor computer lab on the second floor with both PC and Mac. So if you need um, if you need like extra monitors, so feel free to use a computer lab on the second floor. Uh, third floor is our quiet area. So if you need like a space to to study by yourself, um, if you prefer to be uh, to be quiet, so third floor is where you want where you want to go. And we have the main stack here, and we also have the microphone. So if you are looking for some like old newspapers, so this may be where you can find them. If you find like a the format in microform in the catalog, so this is where you can access them. And then the fourth floor is also a quiet area. So we have also have a computer lab as well, as well as the main stacks. So that covers most of the uh, spaces throughout the building. We also have many different spaces that you can check out in the library if you want to study by yourself or you want to collaborate with your classmates. So some of the rooms here are uh, first come, first serve. Some of them can be reserved. And you can follow this link to uh, make a reservation. So you can also access this link uh, on the library's homepage and in the top right, go to book a room. Here you can uh, take a look at what rooms is uh, available and what rooms that you can choose to reserve in advance. Uh, let me close this. So, uh, so that's our study rooms. And then we also have several other learning, research, and creative spaces. So we have the data hub. Uh, this is one of our, our new um, space that we just opened up. So if you have like a data management need, if you need like help with uh, data visualization, uh, data management, uh, data cleanup, we have uh, the personnel to help you with that. We also have some dedicated um, computers with software um, that you can use. Special collections reading room, you can find some uh, rare and archival materials in there. And we also have special collection, special collection staff to help you find anything that might only be uh, available via the special collection browsing. The mail is our uh, maker space. So we have 3D printers, we have uh, sewing machine, button makers, so on and so forth. We also do a lot of programming every semester. So feel free to check out the, the mail calendar as well um, to look up any, um, to look for any events that you might be interested in. Uh, our studio space is our um, audio visual production space. So you can do, uh, you can record voiceovers for your podcast. You can work on uh, video editing uh, projects as well. CBIL is the Center for Digital Inquiry and Learning. So it's a space for digital scholarship, digital humanities, and they also work, they also have many different uh, uh, projects that they have worked on in the past. So feel free to click the link and explore those. And uh, they also have like fellowships that you can apply for as well. And uh, all of these spaces, um, their open hours might be different, so feel free to uh, feel free to open the links and then uh, access uh, those hours and contact the people that you might want to contact. Uh, that could be so whether you are in person here or you are off campus students. Hopefully, we can some do something, provide some service for you as well. And I'm going to send a link to you after the. Uh, I'm going to send the uh, the link to. The slides to you after the workshop so that you can click all, all of those things. Uh, so that's a quick viewing tour. Any questions before we move on? Okay. Uh, next, let's talk about books and articles. Uh, where where do we find the books and where do we find the articles? First, let's start with the books. So we want to start with the uh, library's catalog. So that's lib.uido.edu. 
And then you can simply uh, do a search here by entering your keyword search term. Um, so this is where you can access a lot of our resources. And then uh, below the catalog search bar here, you can access like articles, journals, a lot of resources that most of the time you're gonna need um, here as a graduate student when you need to conduct library research. Uh, after you enter your title or search term, so this is going to be the drop down menu that you can choose to open. So the default is UI plus summit plus e resources that gives you the most comprehensive results when you do a search. So UI stands for UI library, and then summit is our program that we are participating with over 30 other uh, academic libraries in Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. So a lot of times, if we don't have like a specific title that you are looking for, but it might be available via Summit, you can use our Summit to request that book um, and then uh, send it to us, and that will be free of charge. And uh, e-resources just stands for electronic resources. Uh, sometimes you might want to use uh, these other features. So UI plus e-resources, if you are only interested in things that we have here in the library, uh, you can use UI plus Summit. Uh, so if you're only interested in looking at print resources and uh, e-resources only, if you're only looking at electronic resources. And special collections and archives, you are, if you are looking for any spe uh, specific books, maybe just to take a look at what they have in their catalog, you can do that search as well. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the library's catalog and uh, do a quick demonstration. So. Here you can simply enter your keyword search, um, enter your keyword search term. So if I'm interested in say uh, books in books on quarantine, for instance, and then so this is the drop-down menu that I was talking about. So you can feel free to uh, navigate to any of those. And then on the left-hand side here, you can choose uh, many different filters that's available to you. So right now we are just looking at uh, books, for instance. And so under uh, resource types, so we can go find print books here. If I can click, okay. And then apply filters. And this way you, you'll be able to find uh, future all the resources by print books only. And then here, if it's available, it's going to be in green, tells you where you can find it. So you're going to just need to uh, write down the call number. If it says check access options, that means that we do not have the book in the library, but uh, it's most likely available via Summit. So here you can, you can tell that uh, it is available at the University of Washington. And this, after you sign in, there's going to be a link allow you to um, allow you to request the book via summit. Uh, going back to the slides. Uh, so many different filters that you can use. Um, you can also use like creation dates, uh, the topics, uh, several other filters as well. Uh, so if you if you have the book, so it's going to show you available at on the third floor. And uh, you just need to remember that call number. And uh, you can access our uh, four maps. Uh, they are available here in the library. Uh, you won't be able to miss them. So after you come up on the third floor, so we have, uh, we have guys help you to navigate like a specific section. So this one, for instance, is on P by PZ. And uh, we are using the Library of Congress classification system. So if you are not familiar with that, so feel free to click this link to learn more about how to uh, use the call number system to locate this uh, exact book that you are looking for. Um, our, our books are organized by title from A to Z, uh, starting from the fourth to the second. And uh, they are all grouped by subjects um, as well. So you can request the book via Summit if we don't have it here in the library. Uh, occasionally, you might do a search and the title is not available uh, either from our library or from the Summit library. In that case, you have to request it via interlibrary phone, and then we'll be able to get it from, for you from another library. Um, if you never use your library loan before, the easiest way to access it is go to click the ILL on the library's homepage, 
and then go to login. So this is what this is the screen you're gonna look at if you have a, if you have an account. If you never had an account with us before, uh, you just need to register just by give us by giving us your name and your uh, address and maybe some other information as well. And then uh, so you can just give us the title, author, and some other information that you are looking for uh, for that specific book. Uh, using interlibrary loan, you can also request for articles, book chapters, uh, patents, so on and so forth. And that's also uh, free of charge for you. So that covers pretty much everything about finding books here. Uh, articles, well, actually another thing about books. So if you check out the books from the library, you can have it for 120 days, and you can renew it twice. As a graduate student, uh, for some books, you can check it out for six weeks and one renewal. Interlibrary loan is on average about four weeks. And so just know that uh, there is going to be a few days for some books or inter interlibrary loan books to arrive here at the library. And so if you are, so do plan ahead a little bit. If you are like working on like an assignment that's due in, very, in a few days, and so they, they may not arrive here on time. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so articles, there are different ways to find articles in the library. So one way is to just use the catalog and then do a search. And then under resource type, you can check the box of articles. And then under availability, you can check like if you want the full text, if you want the article to come from a peer review journal, if you need it for open act from open access. Another way to uh, access articles is go to a specific to go to uh, databases uh, based on your discipline. If you go to articles on the front page, and here you can um, find your specific discipline and then find those databases uh, by subject, then uh, use those databases to look for articles. If you already know what uh, database that you need, so if you need like PubMed or JSTOR, for instance, you can simply go to database A to Z and find a specific um, journal database and then directly access that way as well. Uh, next, we will talk about the some search strategies. Um, before we move on, any questions from chat? Okay, no. uh, so let's talk about some essential research skills. Um, so first is the keyword search. So uh, ideally you want to identify like some main concepts based on what your topic are, based on what your topic is. So um, a lot of times you don't want to type in like the, 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 the whole um, sentence or the whole phrase or the whole sentence uh, in, as, you, as you might do in like a Google search. That may not work well for library catalog. It's probably not gonna work well for databases as well. So once you have those concepts identified, the keywords, so you can use the Boolean operators to combine them. So as an example, if I'm looking for resources on chains and nutrition, I can choose to narrow my search to make sure that it contains uh, both cheese and nutrition by using N. And then if, are, if, I'm only, if I'm only looking for sources uh, eat on either cheese or nutrition, I can use OR. That's a way to expand my search. Or if I'm only interested in cheese but not interested in nutrition, I can use NOS to uh, narrow my search as well. And then there's also this uh, cluster search tool uh, that I thought was pretty helpful. So essentially what this is, is that um, you can, sometimes you might, uh, you might need help with coming up like related search, search terms or synonyms and things like that. So what this allows you to do is to uh, look up uh, the title, uh, look up the uh, the title of all the um, of all the uh, references that what you're looking for, and then based on what's uh, aggregated on the uh, on the uh, on the web pages. And so if I'm using like the current disease uh, example, and then do a search. So the default is web, and so look up all of the current diseases uh, results under the different uh, web search engines. And then uh, they are grouped under subjects. So if you are a 
like a visual person, you can use the pie chart or you can use the tree map uh, as well. And then you can simply uh, double click and access any specific um, topic that you might find interesting. Another helpful feature um, of this uh, corner of this uh, Carol 2 uh, site is that you can look it up under PubMed. So this could be very helpful. So if you are looking for resources that are related to uh, biomedical or life sciences research, and so uh, feel free to uh, use the PubMed as well. And then there's the list, and then there's the pie chart. So feel free to uh, explore this tool. Next, we have truncations, combinations, and limitations. So truncations is um, essentially many different wildcards you can use. So if I put an asterisk at the end of the word, I can look up like the, the different endings of the root word. So if I put this asterisk at the end, I can look for child, shells, children, um, and so on and so forth. Same with uh, genetic, same with genetic. And then you can use uh, uh, exclamation mark and uh, question mark to look for different spellings of the same word, like women or women, or this one you can look for many, uh, like uh, like single O or O and U. So just keep in mind that the truncation, the wildcards, they may or may not work, work for different databases. So a lot of times when you look it up, uh, using a new different Using a new database, you want to go to the help section to look up like what truncation like uh, is uh, is allowed. So most of most of them they would uh, accept like and or not. And then the combinations is basically combine all of your uh, truncations and boolean operators together. And so you can use the parentheses to specify the specific order um, of the term that you're looking. And then limitations, uh, you can limit uh, by using filters using such as time, geogra uh, geographic areas, document type, uh, language, topic, so on and so forth. So uh, limitations is also pretty helpful and uh, it's pretty much uh, available in most uh, journal databases, journal article databases. And then next we have a uh, control vocabulary, which is basically some uh, words that were came up by the information professionals as a way to tag uh, pieces of information for easier retrieval. So think of control vocabulary as uh, like a, uh, like hashtags on Twitter. And so control vocabulary, there are different many different uh, benefits of using control vocabulary is that you can look up uh, the different spellings of the same word, like American versus British. Or crisis among scientific and popular terms, uh, like the cockroach and the uh, scientific term for cockroach, and then synonyms as well. And so, a lot of times, if you are only looking for like one specific term, uh, and then the author they might use like a different spelling, or they might use the scientific term, or they might use a synonym. So, what you're looking for it may not come up for the other author that might they, they, that they were. That they mean the same thing as which you are searching. And so uh, one way to use to take advantage of control vocabulary is the is to use the Life of Congress subject headings. And so you can one way to do that is to go to this link and then look up and the look up the official uh, subject heading uh, from the Life of Congress. So if you if you like do a search for death penalty, for instance, so this is going to be the one that came up. So the official term is uh, capital punishment. And then using this tool, you can also find uh, the broader terms and narrow terms and some other terms that you can search as well. Another way to do that is to uh, look up the catalog record. And then under LCSH, sometimes you can find a lot of um, subject headings that you can uh, directly apply to your search. And then you can click the, click the link to uh, find the other sources using the same uh, LCSH uh, tag. And uh, once you click that, you can go to advanced search and then add additional, additional keyword search term uh, as well. And I'll just show you real quick how that works. So here, this is our corn disease example. 
Um, so the subject heading here is corn disease and pests. So if I click this link, I can access all the other sources that's tagged by this specific subject heading. And then I can go to advanced search. Here, uh, the subject is already specified as this specific term. I can choose to add additional uh, keyword searches uh, by using the and or, or not. And that can also change by the material type, the language, uh, the date, uh, when was it published. Similarly, in databases, uh, you can use uh, the subject terms. So this might, under different databases, the name might be a little bit different. So in Academic Search Premier, for instance, it's called subject terms, uh, but a different database might be titled under like the Doris or uh, subject, subject keywords, so on and so forth. You can do a search uh, just like, uh, just like uh, what we did earlier, or if you found like a good article, and then you can simply uh, click the subject terms here. Sometimes it's called like the author provided keyword search terms or something like that. I can click that and then go to an advanced search to add additional uh, search terms to your, to apply to your search. Another strategy to use is citation searches. It's great to look up what an article has referenced. So uh, this is very helpful if you find a good source and then you look up the reference or the bibliography, or the uh, or the end notes, or the uh, citation notes, or the um, or footnote. So at the end, hopefully you'll be able to find some other articles that are related to uh, what you are uh, what this current article is about. But one limitation with that is that you can only find articles that were uh, dated prior to the publication date of this current source. So if this is published in say 2011, and then you can only use this to find articles published prior to 2011. And so what you can also do is to look up what other articles or other sources that have cited this current article that you are looking at. And one way to do that is in Web of Science. So if you look up the specific title and then find the article that you're looking at, and then citations will allow you to retrieve the other uh, sources that are citing this particular source. And then references here are just what this kind of, kind of, uh, this uh, existing article is uh, citing again. You can also do that in Google Scholar. So um, similarly, so if you want to look up a specific title and then go to cited by, uh, you can find other articles that citing this source. And you can also use the related articles to find some other articles that may not be directly citing this, but they may be related to this uh, specific topic that you're looking at. So that covers uh, the search uh, strategies. Any questions from online? Okay. So lastly, let's talk about some other resources that will be, that will be very helpful for you to know as a graduate student. <laughs> So first we have research guides. So research guides are put together by, by us, by the librarians here. And then there are uh, different uh, resource guides available to you. There are different types. So one is the course guide. So they may be related to like a specific course. And then we also have some general purpose for you as well. So if you are looking for information on accessibility, have on the information, uh, you might need like image resources if you are putting together the presentation. And then we also have off-campus off access. This is particularly helpful, off, particularly helpful if you are if you are a uh, off-campus student. And so if you go to define books and then receiving and uh, receiving and returning books. So here we provide all the uh, instructions on how can you check how you can you check out the books from the library as an off-campus student. And essentially that we are going to be shipping the book to you and then providing providing you the uh, the return label for you uh, to send the book back to us. And so again, this is a free of charge uh, to you here as a student. And another thing I want to mention uh, that I didn't that I didn't cover earlier is that you can place a digitization request and you can use that service for most of our print resources, uh, not including thesis, uh, dissertation or government documents. 
So essentially that if you are looking for like maybe like one or two chapters in the book, that's all you need. You can send a digitization request and then we'll scan it and send you the PDF. And if you have like your home address here available and then simply choose that and then click request. Um, if you don't have that information updated, feel free to reach out to us and uh, we'll take care of that for you. Um, but if it, if it is a thesis or dissertation that is authored by a uh, previous U of, uh, U of I graduate student, and a lot of times we can just digitize the whole, whole thing and then send it to you as well. So if you have any questions, uh, just send us an email. Uh, next, we have subject guides. And then, so those are related to like a specific <laughs> subject that you might be, uh, that you might be interested in. Um, so one way to look at it is go to the lib guides and then my type. So here we cover a lot of different subjects. Uh, so feel free to find the one that is uh, relevant to your discipline. Then we also have several other um, specific topics like citation management, uh, OER, and so on. Uh, thesis and dissertation. So there are different ways to look up thesis and dissertation. So one way to look it up under the library catalog, go to advanced search. So if I go to this link, essentially that the resource the resource type is already uh, changed to the thesis and dissertation, and then you can add additional search term. Uh, then we also have the focus dissertation and thesis global. Uh, so one of the uh, one of the most comprehensive uh, database for you to find thesis and uh, dissertation completed by graduate students from uh, any pretty much from any institution uh, on, in any country. If you are only interested in uh, thesis and dissertations completed by previous U of I students, uh, you can go to our collections here, and then you can choose to browse. So if you, if you want to you know, enter your own search term here, or there might be, might be, there might be subjects that are relevant to your specific discipline. So you can feel free to use the uh, subjects to find um, all the uh, thesis and dissertations on agriculture, for instance. If you are interested in a particular program, or if you are interested in the timeline by looking at uh, dissertation from the last few years, you can do that as well. Next, we have access tools. So access tools are um, web browser extensions that can help you find some other library resources that we have, or maybe uh, in open access uh, databases or journals. So I just want to highlight a few. Um, so on paywall allows you to find open access journals. And one advantage of using on paywall is that you can find uh, preprints and postprints that otherwise may not be available in the library catalog or in databases. And core discovery works similarly to on paywall, but uh, also allows you to find um, like uh, articles that are missing the DOI number or the DOI number is unknown. And then Google Scholar button allows you to simply uh, uh, simply highlight some keyword search uh, keywords that you find on sites, and then uh, allows you to immediately go to Google Scholar to retrieve some journals. Um, so that's very convenient and also allows you to uh, create, uh, generate a quick citation as well. And then you apply a library login bookmarklet allows you to click that button and then immediately uh, authenticate it. So this can be very helpful if you are off campus student or if you are traveling um, for conferences and such. And then feel free to explore this link uh, to learn more about access tools that we put together um, and then this is also where you can download and install them as well. Uh, lastly, uh, several other resources that I just want to highlight. So first is the data resources. Uh, you might be interested in finding data uh, based on your uh, specific discipline. Um, and then we also have software as well. We have workshops that we have done in the past. And then we also have like the guides by the different subjects. If you are interested in using the data set and don't know how to cite it, so here we provided an example for you. 
Uh, digital collections are things that we have digitized in the past. So they could be uh, print resources or they could be born digital, but we have uh, processed them in batch. So if you are uh, looking for any specific uh, digital petitions related to your uh, program, you can uh, go to subjects and then explore uh, that way and then view different collections uh, as well. Uh, encyclopedia and references. So if you are not very familiar with the topic, uh, so here we have some resources on those. Equipment loans. So if you're curious about like what we have here in the library for you to check out. So we have like headsets, uh, laptops, uh, so on and so forth. So feel free to take a look at this. Um, equipment loan checkout. Uh, government documents. Um, Pretty straightforward and open access publishing funnel. So as a graduate, as a graduate student, uh, you might be uh, expected to write. You might need to publish either as a co-author, as a uh, single author, or maybe co-authoring with your colleagues or with your faculty advisor. So uh, open access publishing fund essentially allows uh, allows you to apply for the fund if you decide to uh, if you decide to publish in an open access uh, journal. And uh, we can help pay. We can help pay for some of the uh, article processing charges. And we open the fund uh, twice a year. So one at the beginning of the, uh, I guess one in summer and one uh, the other time in January. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to my colleague Julissa here. Uh, anytime you see this wording, that means uh, that means that it is uh, still open for application. So feel free to take advantage of this. Uh, streaming videos, we have both, we have videos for both uh, entertainment and also for educational purposes. And then workshop resources is where you can access all the workshops that we have done in the past and take a look at those resources. And so, um, so for today's workshop, for instance, I also made a handout so you can access here. Um, so it's a quick one page handout. And uh, if you are, if you want to access the slide here, so this is where you access the slide uh, as well. And then I will update the video after uh, processing it, maybe take like a day or so. And then if you're curious about like uh, what we have done in the past. So as a graduate student, what you can do is simply type in graduate and then find all the other uh, graduate student essential workshops. Sometimes we might repeat a topic, but some, a lot of times we have like new things to present every year. So feel free to take a look at the resources from previous uh, workshop presenters. Uh, or if you have like a specific, uh, uh, say like a specific need. So if you are looking for like data, for instance, or if you are looking for like citation management help. And uh, so feel free to take a look at the uh, workshop resources. Uh, the easiest way to access this is go to the library's uh, front page and then go to resources here. You can also take a look at our calendar to see uh, what comes up, what's going to be, what are some other uh, workshops that we are going to be uh, facilitating throughout the rest of the semester. Um, workshop resources, board games. So if you are, uh, if you just need a study break, uh, we have a lot of board games, board games for you to check out as well. And we have a lot of other resources that are just too much to cover in a single workshop. So if you have any questions or uh, just have any doubts on whether we have like a, a specific resource that you are looking for, just uh, let us know. Okay. That's pretty much all of it. Um, I know it's a lot of information and uh, so I will make sure to send you all the video recording out of this session. In the meanwhile, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know uh, or to you know contact us um, after the workshop. Any questions from uh, in person or from chat? Okay. Uh, lastly, I just want to quickly mention that uh, we have the other graduate student essential workshops happening uh, for the next four weeks. Uh, that's going to be on Tuesday from 12.30 to 1.30. And uh, it's going to be here in the library first floor classroom, or you can register, register online via Zoom. So next week we have data management, 
and the literature review, and then scholarly presence, and then uh, the last workshop is on um, ArcGIS. Okay, and uh, feel free to take a look at um, feel free to take a look at those workshops and uh, register for any that you are interested in. So that is it. Uh, I want to thank you all for uh, attending to this workshop. My, if you are online, my colleague Lisa is going to send you the evaluation form. So that will just be, uh, I will take you like a few minutes to fill out. So which is also optional. So if you are interested in, if not, um, so just let us know if you have any questions. And thank you all for your attention today.